about 2.5 um, transforming graphs, yeah. Oh. yeah. So yeah. we're talking about what makes graphs move. And we had the basic six graphs. Um, let me just use y equals square root of x. Remember what y equals square root of x looks like? It's, uh, it's, x squared is the problem. This one's the firework graph. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So then we talked about what various things will do to that graph. Like, so what if we... Um, Go square root of x plus 2. Yeah, remember, remember the, the big deal we talked about is whether something is in x's world or outside of x's world, huh? So that one would be in x's world. He's in the root. He's experiencing what x is experiencing. He's in the root with x. And so that one would be left 2. Because remember, x does opposite of what you would expect. Because I would normally think, you know, positive is right, negative is left. That'd be normal. But X always does opposite, so positive is actually left mm -hmm. for X. So that would take the, the square root graph and move him left to, and he would look like that. Okay? And um, then, what if we had the two out there like that? That's going to be a y effector. Is everybody seeing that? When it's out of the root, it's a y effect. on the, It's an up-down kind of thing, huh? It's an up-down kind of thing. Where this one was in, so it, this one was an x effect, a sideways effect, right? So this one will be up to like that. Good. Remember that basic idea? So we talked about whether a number that's in there is an X effector or Y effector. If it's in the whatever, you know, we have absolute, you know, it's not just square roots. Huh? We had other things. We had absolute value. We have X squared. So how would it be in there with X squared? It'd have to be actually in the parentheses like that. That'd be in there. And if you had this, that'd be out, right? So this would be left to... It'd be a U-shape left to. This would be a U-shape up to. Kind of running out of room there. You okay with that? It's kind of terrible looking, but you get what I mean, right? So that one's up to. That one's left to. Again, if it's in there, it's sideways because it, it's an X. It's with X. If it's not in there, it's up down. Okay? Now, that's for numbers added and subtracted. All of that. All of that is add subtract numbers move it they move the graph don't they numbers add they move it so it has a new anchor point off the origin okay well now what about numbers multiplied and divided what if i have two times the square root of x so that number is not added or subtracted it's times first off is is that is that two is he going to have a sideways effect? Is he an X effector? Or is he going to have a vertical effect? Is he a Y effector? But it's not added. But it'll still have an effect. It's just not going to move. That's, that's a Y effector. It'll do something to the graph vertically, won't it? That's a Y effect. And so it's multiplying by 2, so it'll stretch it. So did we not talk about this? Two times as tall. So the normal graph, it'll just make it go up faster. It's still anchored at the origin. It won't move the anchor. So it didn't move the graph. It's still centered, anchored in the same spot, just goes up two times as fast. Yeah. The negatives are the ones that flip it. Right? Rachel. Yes. What? The negatives are the ones that flip it, right? Yes, the negatives flip it. And we'll get to that. Say, if that was a negative to it, flip it. That's right. Negative multipliers flip graphs. That's right. Good to there. Remember that? So that's a y effector. What if I put like a, a half in front? That also is a y effector. That'll compress it to be half as tall as it was. So this will just be a really short one like that. Still anchored at zero, zero. So those things don't move the center. The center is still zero, zero. You only move the center by adding subtracting numbers, huh? But when you multiply or divide, that's the same thing as dividing, right? That would be the same thing if I just said square root of x over 2. This and this are the same.
right? Because multiplying by half divided by two, same thing. In both cases, it just compresses the graph to be half as tall as it was, huh? Still centered and anchored at zero, zero. Good with all that? All making sense? So adding, subtracting moves the anchor. Multiplying, dividing stretches or compresses. Multiplying stretches, dividing compresses. Okay, now what about the negatives? Yeah, we talked about those, didn't we? So like what if you have negative 2 square root of x? So that's a negative multiplier. Um. It's going to flip it, huh? When you multiply by a negative, it flips it. Now, there's two ways you can flip it. Let me go over here. Then there's that. They're both going to flip. One of them's going to flip vertically. Other one's going to flip sideways. So that first one, this one, which kind of flip does he do? Vertical. Vertical, because again, this guy is not in X's world. He's not in the root. He's going to have a vertical effect upon the graph. Instead of going up like it normally does, it'll go down, huh? Whereas the other one, this guy, he's like, I'm in there with you, X. I'm in your world. Yeah, he'll go sideways. He'll flip sideways. Does that make sense? So if something is in the whatever with X, in the root, in the absolute value, in the two power, then it's sideways, move, stretch, flip, whatever. If it's out of the root or absolute value or whatever, then it's going to be of some kind of a vertical result, either a move or a stretch or a flip, vertical. Good? These coming together for you? Yeah. All right, so now... With 35 questions, they're going to question us on this concept every angle. It's, it's, you know, every possible facet. It's a very thorough section. It's a good... All right. So think to yourself. Don't shut out. Give everybody just a second. Think about if it's A, B, C, or D there. They're giving us a graph. And they, this is how the test will be, you know, multiple choice. So this one has been flipped down, huh? And it's been moved. Here's the anchor. That's not, those look like they're going by 2 because it's a 10, huh? Mm -hmm. So it's been moved. Up six. Moved up 6 and flipped up and down. down. Right? The U-shape's been flipped down but moved up 6. So which one of those does that? Yeah, that one, huh? Mm -hmm. Everybody see that? Because the, the minus on the X squared does the flip down and the plus on the 6 is... Up six moves it up six, huh? Are, we good? Yeah, I was backed up to number one. Good so far? Figure it out which of those it is. All right, so the absolute value graph, which normally, you know, the normal one sits in the middle and goes up like that. This one's been moved. What is that, left? Seven? Yeah, seven. And then flipped down, huh? Flipped down. So left seven, flipped down. Which one is it, A, B, C, or D? C. Yeah, it's this one, huh? Negative on the outside. Because remember, x is opposite, so that's actually left 7. The plus is actually left. x is opposite. And then that's, again, the negative on the outside. That's your flip down. Because that's a y effector, isn't it? That's a negative 1, really, out there, huh? And that's not in the absolute value, so it's, it's not an x. It's a y vertical effect. Good? If it's not in the absolute value, it would affect the y. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So something's always y if it's not in the whatever your function is. Third word problem section. Okay, so y equals x squared up 3. So give that a try. Up 3. All right, what's going to move it up 3? Just up 3, just like that, huh? It's, got, it, it's not like this, because that would be, that'd be a sideways effect, huh? It's got to be outside of the, away from the X, it's up three. Let me help you with this one. So this is what the, it's something like that. So Y equals root of X, reflect across the X axis. The first thing to get straight is what that language even means. What does that mean to reflect across the X axis? 
if I have some kind of graph, let's say, you know, blah, 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 whatever. I got some kind of graph, and somebody says, hey, take that graph and reflect it across the x-axis. What does that even look like? Before I even think about the equation, just what is that visually? Here's the x-axis. Yeah, it means you're going to grab the x-axis like a barbecue rotisserie. <laughs> right? You know, you're going to grab it and you're going to rotate the x-axis. That's what it means to rotate about the x-axis. Right? So it's going to actually come down like this, isn't it? So notice what kind of effect is it? Is it a sideways effect or a vertical result? It actually is vertical. It's actually a Y effect. That's weird because they said X-axis, but it's a Y effect. So you have to remember that along with everything else in this section. It makes it a challenging section. Whenever they mention axis, it actually means the other direction. So if you reflect across the X-axis, that actually means a Y kind of thing. An up-down kind of thing. You see what I'm saying? And if they say reflect across the Y-axis, that's a sideways kind of thing. An X effect. So that's tricky. So let me write that. When they, they say reflect across the X-axis, it means a Y effect. And vice versa. See it right there? When you reflect across the x-axis, it means a y effect. So that gets tricky. Whenever they use that terminology, you got to remember to rethink it. Do a double think there. So, okay. So let's do this question then. So they want me to take... Now, now that we have the picture idea straight in our mind, let's go to the y equals root x. They want me to take y equals root x, and they want me to do something to that equation, which actually has a y flip effect. Y flip effect. Um, so if you put the negative out here, correct. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because that's a Y effector, huh? Mm -hmm. Not an X effector. We good? All is well? Okay, they're going to... Um, yeah, maybe I better, yeah, I don't want, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of information to all keep straight. So, um, okay, well, so first off, go, go ahead and do, do, yeah, do the normal thing first off, rather than me, I don't want to do too much at once, go ahead, just do the normal thing, reflect about the x-axis, so do, do what you think, and then there's, I want to tell you one other thing, but go ahead, first get the main part straight, and then we'll do something more advanced. So reflect about the x-axis. Reflect about the x-axis. So remember what that means. Here's the x-axis. So if you have a graph, it's going to go down, huh? It actually means a y effect, doesn't it? Right, because you're grabbing the x-axis like a barbecue rotisserie. And you're turning the x-axis, the thing will go vertical. So, so now that means what? Negative. negative not, not on the x like that. Mm -hmm. Not like that. But negative what? Negative. Do I do both of them negative? Yeah, yeah you got to do both of them because it's the whole y. No, it's just like this if you want. You can do that. That's right too. Or you could just go ahead and distribute it. And it would be like that. Does that make sense? Because it's all of Y that's affected. Oh, that's the whole thing. The whole thing. Because it's all of Y, not just part of Y. Yeah. So, if we had a, a square root with an X in it plus a 1. In, in the root? The ones in the root? No. Or the ones outside? The ones outside. We would yeah. just put that negative. In front of the root. So, if you had root X plus 1 and you reflected it, it would be negative there and negative there. Yeah, because it's got to be all of Y. Yeah, having said that, I'm not really telling you the way it really is. I mean, that's true. That's the right answer and everything. But let me give you the why. What, what, here's the deeper reason, which you will need on number 35. Um, the very last one is going to push us hard. So, um, so the truth you really need to realize is when you're doing these changes to the graph and you're wondering what happens to the equation, the changes to the equation are replacements. They're not just tags on to the end. What am I talking about? 
So let me write it, and then and then I'll show an example. Um, when you change a, a, a formula, when you change a formula, or an equ it's an equation. When you change an equation, replace x or y with the new version replace like plugging you know by replace i mean it's like plugging it's like plugging into a function Do not just put the change next to x or y. It's a replacement. It's not just a putting it next. What do I mean? Let me give you a specific example. What if we started with something like y equals 2x, okay? And somebody said, now, make the following change. Uh, make it move... Um, why don't we say right three? How about all right? So 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 how would I take y equals two x and move that? Well, what would I do to the equation to move it right three? Now we might think if I hadn't told you this new piece of information, you might think, well, you know. X is opposite, so just put a minus 3. That's not right. No. That's, that's just tagging it onto the end. Instead, you've got to take the X right here and plug in. We, we know it's um, X minus 3. That part's true. But you've got to plug it in. So it's like that, which would actually be 2X minus 6. That's correct. Do you see the difference? you see the difference between plugging in a replacement from just tagging a minus 3 on the end? Mm -hmm, yeah. That's what's really happened. This is where it gets not simple. That's really what's going on. When you mess with these equations and do the right 3, left 3, up 3, down 3, whatever, all that stuff we're doing, it's not really just tagging a plus 3 or minus 3 onto the end of x or y or whatever. It's taking the x and plugging into his place the x plus 3 or the x minus 3 or, or the y, and plugging into his place y plus 3 or y minus 3 or whatever. That's what it really is. It's really replacement. It's plug-in. That's really what's happening. So to get to the truth. Now, most of the time, it doesn't matter. Most of the time, it ends up looking that way anyway. See, if I didn't have this 2 in the front, then it wouldn't matter, right? Just put the minus 3 on the end, plug in the minus 3, whatever. It looks the same. But since the 2 is there, that's why I gave you one that would matter. Yeah. Then that's different, huh? Since we have a number in front of right, and and then there's a million other. I can't. It's not just that case. Could be a million other situations in which it would matter. So you just need to know that really, really, it's replacement. It's plugging in. It's not just tagging something on the end. So okay. So when I get back to here, <clears throat> and that, that's why when they say so, here's how you really should do do this. I and mean, we got the answer right, but kind of for a so-so reason. Here's, here would be the real logic. You would look at this and go, okay, reflect about the X. That means it's a vertical jump. It's a Y effect, which means negative Y should be plugged in for Y. That should become negative Y. Because it's a Y flip, isn't it? And then, now, and that's fine. I mean, this is a right answer and everything. But nobody ever leaves a negative on Y. It's just a looks thing. I mean, that's the truth. That is the truth and a technically exactly correct. But nobody likes that look. So how do we make it look better? Negative. We go, oh, we don't like that. So multiply through by negative 1 because we don't like a negative on the Y. So, and that is the answer we got. But that's really the reason why that's true. It's because really you replace Y with negative Y. That's really what you do. Does that make sense? So really, when we do a Y flip, we're replacing Y with negative Y, plugging it in. We do an X flip, we're replacing X with negative X, plugging it in. 
or any of the other things we're doing as well. It's really plugging in the new version for X and Y. 99% of the time, they won't push you so hard that it really matters. Um, you know, this isn't high-level calculus or something where we're going to push every detail and make you really master everything. But number 35 will. Number 35 will. And so you, you'll have to know that on number 35, or you'll be lost. Okay, so, try, so take Y equals root of X and vertically stretch it by a factor of 8. Give me a second, do that. The absolute value of X. Could do something to that equation that'll vertically stretch it by a factor of 8. Yeah, that's what I Eight times as tall as it was. All right. Vertically. That's up down, huh? Mm -hmm. That's a Y effect, isn't it? So is it going to be in the absolute values Outside. or out? Outside. Out. Just like that. Good? What's that? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Plus 8 would move it up 8. I don't want to move it up 8. I'm stretching it. So I'm not moving it. I'm not moving it. I'm stretching it. Yeah, good question, Abdul. Is that good? Does that make sense? Is that horizontally? But, um, what he just said? Oh, this right here? You no, know, this would be up because it's not in the absolute value. Horizontal would be like this. And that actually would be left 8, huh? That would be left 8, because that's in the absolute value, so that's a sideways. This is out of the absolute, so this is up-down, but it's up-down movement. This is up-down stretch. Everybody see the difference? So when you multiply, remember, that's a stretch. Right, in other words, the graph would still be centered at the origin. We're not moving it. It's still anchored at the origin. It's just going to go up super fast, 8 times as fast, from the same starting point. Right, not, not this. Make sense? Other questions, comments? Yeah. Olga. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 8 plus x, or does it have to be x plus 8? Does it matter? Okay, so, so none of these are the right answer. I know. But this is. Does it matter how you would put it? Would you put like y equals x plus? We don't want any pluses, is what I'm saying. Okay. Do, um, so, so, well, um, okay, so, so maybe um, if, if the answer was this, it's not. Okay. This is the same as this. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. These guys are totally the same. Yeah. Neither one of them are the right answer for our problem. But if they were some other problem, yeah, they're the same as, yeah, the order of adding never matters. Order of adding never matters. Just like numbers, right? 2 plus 3, 3 plus 2, it's 5 either way you do it. Never matters with x. Well, yeah, those two are totally the same. In the same way, I could put this 8 in the back. That's okay. But it's got to be times. Whatever it is, it's got to be multiplied, not added, subtracted, because it's a stretch, not a move. Yeah, good. Okay. So, uh, number 11 here, we're going to take, oh, and I, I got it off the screen. So, we're starting with y equals root x, and step one, move it up two. So, can you f first do step one, take that y equals root x graph and move it up two. So for moving it up to, are we going to, is that a add, subtract kind of thing, or a multiply, divide kind of thing? Add, so moving is adding, subtracting. Okay. Is it going to be in the root or out of the root? Out of the root. Out, because it's Y. So up to, just outside the root like that. Good. Or you can put that two in the front, like Olga was saying, either way. Okay, step two. Reflect. Now, and we're building, right? So now we're going to take this. And add another step. And then just keep building as we go. Reflect about the x-axis. Now, remember, when they use that, you, it's reverse, huh? Mm -hmm. So here's the x-axis. So if you had a graph, to reflect is to go like that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a y effect, actually, isn't it? It's vice versa. So they're really asking you to do a vertical flip, aren't they? So let me let you do that. Do a vertical flip to that graph. Yeah, Samuel. Do all of them have to be negative? Uh, right. So it's just like that last one, huh? Yeah, because it's all of y. Really what we're doing technically is replacing y with negative y, huh? But we never leave a negative on y, so we multiply through by a negative 1, 
And yeah, it ends up being the way. You can just go straight to here. You don't have to do that other step. Yeah, does that make sense? Because it's really replacement, isn't it? You're really replacing y with negative y. But it's weird, isn't it? Because they say x-axis, but it ends up y with negative y because that's what it means to rotate over the x-axis. You're rotating vertically, y with negative y. Good there. Now, keep going. Building. Now, we're going to use this and do one more step. Step three, reflect about the y-axis. Reflect about the y-axis. So now, it's like moving a graph over here. Here's the y-axis. Mm -hmm. Ends up like over there. It's a sideways flip, isn't it? From your, so you're reflecting not from where we are right now, but from the point of origin. From where we started. No, no, no. We're building. Oh, okay. So yeah, I probably should have done it down here. This guy's going yeah. over here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're continuing to build. Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to visualize from... Yeah, so originally we flipped over the X, and now we're flipping over the Y. So, so when all is said and done, we flipped over both. So it's going to... So take that equation, take this last version we had, and now do a flip about the Y, and if you flip over the Y, you're flipping sideways, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So we're going to put in replace, plug in, negative X. It's an X thing, isn't it? So it'll become y equals negative root of negative x. So right in that x spot, I plug in negative x, and we're done. Replace x with negative x. Plug in for x, negative x, because it's a sideways flip when you reflect over the y-axis. How are we so doing? It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be negative x plus 2 because you're moving left. <clears throat> Or you're moving well, we're not, they didn't say to move. Oh, okay. There might be some results that will cause that, oh, okay. but they said reflect. Okay. So reflect means replace x with negative x. Okay. All right. So the original graph was root x. So step, so in the end, let me see, up 2, so we go up 2, so there's the up 2. And now when you reflect it about the x-axis, so you grab the x-axis like a rotisserie, and you turn it. Can you see where that graph's going to go? It's going to go down like that. When you return, uh, he's, he was asking about that. Naz was asking what, what it's going to look like when we turn it. So we turn it, there's step B, and so this is step B, this is step A. And then finally, step C, they say now reflect it about the Y. This is the Y. It's going to go like that. There's the final version. So we're just turning step it. three. So I guess it was step one, two, three. So this is the final deal. Right, because because that's what happens. Yeah. So just think just think real life. Um, so I'm I'm not doing anything other than what's true. So um, it's always what I'm doing in math class. That's nice to be a math teacher. I'm just like always right. Except when, I, except when I mess up, but I mean, the math is always right. I guess I'm not always right. The math is always right. So, yeah, just think about if I move something up to, okay, on a graph. Okay, so think about, think about if something is up to, and then you flip it over. Well, I guess I can't show that too well. So I turn the paper over, there's nothing to see. But can you, can you, I guess I'm just going to say, can you imagine it? Can you picture it? Right? If something is up to, see how this is? If I grab this, this up to, and I flip it, it'll go down there, won't it? And then you flip it sideways, it goes over there. So that's what it would look like. So number 14, they're taking the point. Now, now they're coming at us from another angle. They're just taking the point, 1, 3, that's the X, that's the Y, and they're... Um, they're saying, hey, what will happen? Where will it go if you take 2f? They're not even telling me what the function is. It's 2y. I don't even know what the function is, but they're just saying, you're putting a 2 out here. What's that going to do to the point 1, 3? So the point 1, 3 over 1, up 3, right there, 1, 3, which is on some original function. I don't even know what, some original f of x function. That point over 1, up 3, where's that particular point? going to go when you throw a 2 in front of the f of x like that? So the question is, is that 2 an x effector or a y effector? Is it going to have an up-down kind of effect 
or a vertical kind of effect? What do you think? Down or vertical? Oh, did I say uh, Yeah. What's it going to do? It's going to have up, down. Right? It's going to make the thing jump up, down, isn't it? So it's going to change the Y coordinate, isn't it? Not the X coordinate. What's it going to do? Times 2. So it would be 1, 6. There it is. Yeah, Rebecca. So if you wanted it to have an effect on the function, like how would that look? It, f of 2x. Okay. That would, that would, yeah, what would that do? So what if I started with 1, uh, what was it, 1, 3? Three? 1, 3, and I put the 2 in there. That's going to do something to the x now, isn't it? Because that's in x's world. So this one is a y effect because he's not in x's world so he just multiplied the y right i took the one three and i just got times two made it six huh isn't that what it's basically saying is y equals two y um yeah two times the y value well yeah. Yeah, well the function I and uh, let's go there some other time you grab me off stage you want to talk more about that but um but um that that two what's that two going to do on the x So what would that do here? This, I'm asking you a hard question. It's not simple. So this is the X and the Y. It's not a move. It's not a move. Multiply and dividing, stretch and compress. They don't move. Adding, subtracting, move. Multiply and dividing, stretch, right? So what will it actually do? To, so so, so we're, we're talking about an actual point. One, three. This two. What if they put it in there with X? See, when it was out here with y, it multiplied the y-coordinate by 2, right? Mm -hmm. So what about when it's in there with x? When it's still so what will it do? So you guys are telling me all kinds of graph talk. This is just one point, folks. This is just one dot. Well, Tell me where that one dot will go. Will it take the x value and multiply it by 2? No. It's just the x, though, right? Not the y. So the y, I agree, the y is not going to change. Well, has nothing to do with y. Will it multiply the x value by 2? Yes. Maybe. <laughs> I, did I put it off the board? Never forget this. Always, in every situation, um, without exception, and you can never forget it. There's so much to remember, isn't there? x is always doing the opposite of what you think he should do. So instead, so when you put that 2 there on that x, which is multiplying that x, what will it actually do to the x number? Divide, Divide it. This will be a half comma 3. Mm -hmm. There's the answer. I can't believe I forgot that one. There's so many rules to keep straight, isn't there? Is that good? How are we doing? Is it making sense? Yeah. Just got practice. <laughs> all right, all right. So number 15... Let's, okay, so now they're going to take um, x-intercepts, negative 6, negative 2, and they're going to have us do different things with x-intercepts. So they're saying, okay, x is negative 6, x is negative 2. They're both x values, right? Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, all right, let's do some different things to the function. And you tell me where, what happens to those x values. You have the answers already there. So x plus 4. What does x always do? Opposite, opposite. What's the opposite of adding 4? Subtracting 4. Negative 10, negative 6. That's how they got this. Good there. So all we're doing now is moving individual dots. So we're not talking about a whole graph moving. Although, yeah, that's true. We're just talking about individual dots and where they will move. So when you go x plus 4... That's going to go left 4, huh? It's going to subtract 4. Okay, how about the next one? So now this one does not build. Can you tell the way that if you had time to read the whole words and everything? They're not building. They're just saying every time start over again with negative 6, negative 2. So I'll start again here with negative 6, negative 2 on part B. And now I'll do x minus 2. So what's that going to do? Negative 4. Add 2 to both, because x is always opposite, right. mm -hmm. so that'll add to, how are we doing, I feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm stepping away from you now, I don't want to say, are you with me, mm -hmm. sorry, I can't slow down a lot, we've got big word problems in the next section, 
But is that, am I making sense or something I can say to help? I'm hearing less and less feedback. More and more reserved quietness. Yes, Rebecca. Um, so, okay, maybe I just did it wrong. Because you input the Whoops, did I say add wrong there? What did I do? It's supposed to be zero. What's that? Go ahead. When you just input um, negative 10, comma, negative 6, that was correct? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. I've just done something wrong. No parentheses or anything on that. Do you have the same problem I do? Oh, okay. No, I have different numbers. What do you have? Um, I have what do you? Is your 2x values? Uh-huh. And what's your f of x? Uh, plus 9. So you subtract 9 from both of them? Get negative 2 and negative 1. Yeah. With a comma in between. All right. So, so that's part B. Let's try part C. So on part C, we're starting again now with the same x. Starting again with x is negative 6, x is negative 2. And this time, notice they're putting a 7 in front of f of x. I just messed up the white lines. Or yeah. Affect the x yeah, x will stay. Right. Okay, so, so uh, for 7 f of x, we want to ask ourselves, is that 7, is he in there with x? Nope. He's not in the parentheses with x. It's not like this. That would be a 7 that's in there with x, going to do something to x values, huh? So this 7, he's not going to do anything to x values because he's a y factor. These are what? X values. What did I just say? He's not going to do anything to x values. These are x values. I don't care what he does y. These are x values. Make sense? Nothing happens to x values. They're testing if you're aware of that. So that's, that's a Y effector, right? He's not in there with X. He's not in there with X. He's a Y effector. He just does things to Y values. He doesn't mess with X values. Yeah? Yeah, hey, we don't do nothing we do with the 7, then. We just leave it until you talk about uh, Y intercepts? Yeah, yeah. If they gave me Y values, then I'd have something to do with that 7. Totally. Jimmy, right, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. Exactly right. Yeah, so we don't do anything with that 7. To X values, I, they're only giving me X on this one, so nothing. That makes sense. How are we doing? I'm just curious about Y intercepts now. Yeah, yeah, they're not asking me Y intercepts on this one. Is that good? How about okay? Now the the last part of this one, as we start again with X is minus six and X is minus two, and they say negative X. So they're putting negative on X. So we would just put negative on x, put negative, negative, negative 6 and negative, negative 2, which would make positive 6 and positive 2, 6 and 2. We good? On those four parts? All right, let's keep going. Okay, can you see that? Let me make it a little bit bigger for you. Y is the square root of x minus 1. So... Which of those four graphs is right? B. B. So think about what that minus one is going to do. Give you a second on that. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, so that minus one, is he going to have a sideways effect or a vertical effect? Sideways. Sideways because he's in there with X, huh? Mm -hmm. He got in there. So he, if it was like this, he was outside, then that'd be an up-down. That'd be down one, huh? But he got in there. And, now, and remember, X is opposite, so what's he going to actually do? Plus right. right one, huh? So, yeah, it's that one, isn't it? We good? Getting the hang of this? Is it getting more comfortable? Yeah. All right. All right, try that one. So let me make it a little bigger for you. So Y equals X plus 2 cubed plus 5. All right, so think about what that plus 2 is going to do and the plus 5 there, about what they're going to do. So what's that plus 5 going to do? It's going to make it go up, up, up. Up 5. What's that plus 2 going to do? It's going to go left. Because it always does opposite, huh? So basically we have an x cubed to snake graph. They're all snake graphs. So we're going to, the origin is where it's normally centered. Go left 2, up 5, 3, 4, 5. 
boom right here. Boom and boom. So left hook five. Yeah, D, huh? You good? That's the center of the snake graph on D there. All right. So this one is y equals minus 4th root of, 4th root of x same as square root, same, same thing, it's whatever, same thing, because it's an even root, so it's like a 2 root, so, alright, so C, let me give you a second on that one, don't say that loud, give everybody a chance there, figure out which one it is. Okay, so that negative? Yes. yes. Is it going to be, it's a flip, huh? Is it a right-left flip or an up-down flip? An up-down Yeah, because it's vertical. It's not in the root. So that's a down flip, huh? It's a, ver well, ver vertical flip, same thing, whatever. Vertical flip, down flip, so which one? D. Good. Now, you might say, well, what about C? C's down. But it's also backwards. What would C be? Both, huh? Yeah. Both the down and the left would be C. All right. Okay, so Y equals cube root of negative X. So remember, the cube root's the sideways snake. Oh, yeah, so it's no way, no way. Because those are the ver those, these are x to the third power graphs, huh? They go up and down. Remember, the power ones go up and down more. The root ones go sideways more. So it's either A or B. It's one of the sideways ones. And what is that negative going to do? It's going to make it a little cross It's going to flip it, right? Normally, it goes like that. But when you do the negative, it's going to flip and go like that, huh? Flip sideways mm -hmm. like that. By the way, do you, do you notice that a vertical flip would do the same thing on this one? There is no difference between a vertical flip and a sideways flip. The resultant picture would be the same. <laughs> do you see that? And that makes sense in the equation. If you put a negative in the front of a cube root, which is a vertical flip, that's not different algebraically from the negative in. It's the same thing. Remember with odd roots? We talked about that a couple weeks ago. Odd roots, negative in or out, it's the same. And graphically, it's the same, isn't it? Whether you take the snake and you flip him sideways or you flip him vertical, it's the same thing. Isn't that nice to see the perfect agreement in graph truth and equation truth? They are speaking as one, the truth. Yeah? The snakes never bubble out, right? No, yeah, not completely. They're always going up, but slowly. But yeah, they never completely level. There's no asymptote lines there. So y equals 2, square root of x plus 4, and then there's a plus 2 added later outside the root. All right, so think about that one. What do you all think? What, what's it? Let's, let's take it piece by piece. What's that plus two out there doing? It's going up two. Yeah, yeah, that one's up two, huh? Because that's a vertical? Mm -hmm. That vertical? Getting the hang of that? And what's that plus four doing right there? It's going to the complaint. It's, it's, in, it's in the root. It's in X's world. It's going to be a right-left kind of thing, and X is always left. opposite, so that'll be left. left four. Good. What's this two in the front doing? Stretch. Yeah, that's a stretch vertical times two stretch, isn't it? Good. Getting get something guys getting the hang of all these. Things. Up two, left four. Which one's up two, left four? A. Uh, B's been moved down a little bit. See how he starts down a little bit? Yeah. A is left two up, you know, left left and up. It's the only one that's left and up, huh? So that's it. We good? Getting easy. Try that one. Rebecca. Um, it only when we're it, right? Yeah, it actually does. I'll talk about it later. For now, no. For this one, no. It doesn't yeah. matter at all. There's really specific ones it does, and I'll have to say a lot about that later. So, um, all right. So what's that minus 3 out here doing? It's going down 3. Yeah. 
tactile thread. And what's that thing do? Rotating it on the axis. Does it flip it vertically or sideways? Negative multipliers are always a flip right on. So that, that, that's, that's a... Yeah, because it's X, it's sideways, huh? Sideways flip. Does that make sense? Because it's on X. Anything on X has a sideways effect. So you take the normal square root graph, which is normally centered at the zero, zero, anchored at zero, zero, and you're going to move it, what, down three? One, two, three, and flip it sideways. Oops, I had to take the wrong one. Is that good? Which one is that? Oh, yeah, A, huh? Really? Make sense? Down three, go sideways? Is all well? I'm trying to read. You guys give me the poker face. No poker face. You got you to show me whether, like, nod yes or, or go, mmm, look so of concern. Maybe, maybe that is your look of concern. If it was negative Y, it would have been the mirror. It would have been reflected. Uh, yeah. Okay. That, yeah. So if the negative was out here, that would be a vertical flip yeah. instead of a sideways flip. So if the negative is on X, so anything in the root is sideways effect. Anything outside the root is an up-down effect, huh? Okay. So that was a sideways flip, wasn't it? And a down three. Oh, okay. Right. You good? So y equals 2. Absolute value through minus x. Try that one. Are we ready to answer? Minus Should we take a survey? How many say A? How many say B? How many say C? <laughs> How many say D? You're kind of spread out, huh? All right, you know what might help you? It might help you to rewrite this. A little weird the way they wrote it. It's the same as this, huh? That's, that's the same, right? Because the X is still negative, the 3 is still positive. That's the same thing. You can, you can always move things around as long as you take the sign in front of them with them. It's their baby. It's their sign. So we, take we it with them. The would, would that be easier for you? Do we ignore the absolute value signs for x? No. Is, it, is this... Well, I know what you mean. Yeah. Let's, let's get to that in a second. Okay. So is this first off okay for you? That's the same thing, right? Same thing. Maybe that's easier to look at. So what is that plus 3 going to do? Three. Up, down, right, or left? X is opposite. Right. Um, <laughs> it's going to go left, three. Mm -hmm. well, what are we? Yeah. Oh, wait. Right? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm getting confused myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is the trick one. This is what I was looking for. Okay. Yeah, right? Yeah. This this has a total trick. Yeah, this has a total trick. That's why. That's yeah, this is the one. I wish wish I had an hour to talk about it, but um, I got a bunch of word problems to get to <laughs> for y'all. Um, so I'll say a few words though. Um, we've we've been trained up to now. Mm -hmm. uh, I've told you, it's left three, well, which is sort of true. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, it's left three, so it should be left three, right? X is opposite left three, okay. And, and then what's that negative do? Sideways flip, huh? Sideways flip, right? A negative on X, it's not a vertical flip, it's a sideways flip. Sideways flip. And then and what's that, what does this two do? Vertical stretch uh, times two, right? It makes it two times as fast. That's not going to make a big visual effect. It's going to just go up or down faster. Anyway, the main thing that we need to get straight is these guys, right? Left, three, sideways, flip. So it seems like we should have a graph that's left, you know, the normal one is, the normal one's centered at the, you know, it's a V-shape centered at the origin, right? We want to go left, three, like that, left, three, and then we want to flip it sideways. Now, what happens when you take a V, I feel like I'm Winston Churchill. You guys, I don't know. 
I listened. I spent <laughs> 50 hours listening World to Winston Church. Churchill's biography last year. Very, very fun. Anyway, I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, so he was famous for the, you know, World War II. He led England through in the battle with Hitler. And he was, con- he was a very positive guy. He was very helpful to England through that war. He was like, we're going to win. We're going to win. Do not give up. And so his si- signal was always peace or, or vi- oh, victory, not peace. He, he, would, he, would, he did not want him. That was his whole mantra. We will not have peace with Hitler. Hitler wanted him to, you know, I'm, I'm getting too excited about the biography. All right. He had, was not peace. He was like, we will fight, right? He has that famous say, we will fight in the streets. We will fight in the air. We will fight in the ground. We will fight. We will not submit to Hitler because he will make us slaves. So his thing was always V for victory. So I feel like I'm Hitler here. If you take a V, I'm not Hitler. I feel like I'm Winston Churchill. I'm really getting confused. So you take a V, a V graph like Winston Churchill always flashed for the camera. The V graph, the victory sign, the absolute value. We're in math class. What's so absolute value? Absolutely. And you flip it sideways. What happens? Nothing, right? So you flip it sideways, but hold on. There's a little more to the mystery here. So we would think, but I'm going to tell you more of the mystery. We would think that it's, it's just left three, and you flip it, and nothing happens. So there it is, and that, that answers, well, I guess it's kind of there. We would think D. Now we get to Rebecca's good question that she asked, and I kind of brushed aside because we weren't ready for it a few minutes ago. That is, does the order matter? Remember when you asked that? That was a good and insightful question. Here the order really matters. The an- let, let me show you why. Because here's the real deal. First up, two things to get straight. That's why I'm going to go too long. Plus, I'm doing biography, so I don't get time for that. All right, so um, two things to get straight. When we do our flips, it's not a flip standing in place. It's a flip across the axis. Mm-hmm. So in other words, if, um, if you move right three, and you got your V right, right over there, right three, and you flip, it's wrong of me to flip it standing in place. You're supposed to flip across an axis. We're always flipping across. So if you flip that axis, it would actually go over here, wouldn't it? Yeah, Yeah, it would still look like a V. That part is true. But the whole axis would flip it over to there, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. You with me on that? So all of our flips are really flips across an entire axis. So it would flip it, you know, right? It's It's like I grab that axis like a barbecue thing, you know, and I I turn it. So the whole thing goes over there. So do you see how a right three in that case, even though we only moved right three, we never moved left three, but because we flipped afterwards, it ended up looking like left three, even though we never moved left three. That gets pretty tricky. Do you see that? So if a flip comes after a move, then it reverses the effect of the move. A right three followed by a flip, ends up looking like a left three, and that's what happened here. You actually move this, this, oh, it was out of the way, huh? It was actually left three first, left three, the V's sitting here, and then comes the sideways flip, which flips it where? Over there. That's the answer. It's um, C. Let's go back. All right, so everybody see that? It ends up here, so... The, the left three happens, bonk, 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 left three, and then the flip across the axis, right? We're turning the entire axis and zoop, it jumps over there, right? So it ends up right. Now, Rebecca's question, I still have an answer, and that is, well, why, Mr. Heron? Why does the move happen first, and then the, or I mean the move, and then the flip, what if you did the flip first? Her question's a great one. What if we, first, you know, starts here, right? What if I, instead, I flipped first, then moved? Because it doesn't say what order. It just says do them both, right? Do a move, do a left three, and do a flip. Doesn't say what order. If I move left three first and then flip, I end up right three. But if I do the flip first, I do nothing effectively, right? Because right? if you just grab this axis and you just rotate that axis, right? It, it, it is just going to do the Winston Churchill thing. Nothing. And then it's and then move left three. You would end up left. Huh? Instead of right. So we got to know what order they did it in. You with me? Yeah. So I've just made it worse, basically. Because that's the reality. So I didn't want to dump all that on you at once. I tried to ease out this information. All right. So the order matters here, doesn't it? And I haven't talked about order up to now because there's too much else to worry about and it didn't really affect the answers. This is the first one it does. 
All right, I'm going to use that. I'm already using up too much time. Um, yes, the order matters. I could give you the rule. I could say, here's the rule. It's this, 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 this. Math and science is not so much about rules. I mean, there's just too many to remember. There's too many rules. I mean, here, here, you want the rule? Uh, when it comes to X, because you might think, well, do we multiply first or do we do the move? When, when, the, when the, the issue is when you have both a movement and a flip in the same direction. So everybody's seen the issue. Up to now, this hasn't mattered on any of our problems. Why not? Because we would have the move sideways and the flip, say, vertically. Mm -hmm. If they're not both sideways, who cares? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not making sense out of that. If I take a graph and I, like, moved it sideways and then flipped it afterwards, vertically, flip vertically, do you see how that's not going to matter? Because the movement and the flip are in different directions. If they're in different directions, who cares what order you do it in? It won't make a difference, right? If I flipped first and then moved right three, it still ends up at the same spot in the end. It doesn't matter. The problem is when there's both a move and a flip sideways or both a move and a flip vertically, then the order matters, right? You see, if you moved it up three first and then flipped vertically, the up would become down if you flipped it about that axis. Do you see the trick? Yeah. So the problem is very rare. It's only when there's both a move and a flip in the same direction. Both a move and a flip sideways, or both a move and a flip vertical. In those cases, yes, you do have to know what order they did it in. How do you know? It's pretty complex. It turns out for Y, it's actually the flip first and then the move. For X, it's vice versa. The move always comes first, then the flip. But forget I said that. There's too many rules. That is not how you should do math science. Memorize, 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 memorize. Rule after rule after rule after rule. That's, there's, that's not going to get, that's just too much. You're not going to remember that when the weather's cold in December and you're taking the final exam. No way. Too many rules. We'll have a thousand rules between now and then. Instead, let me give you a plan to handle it that, it, that is, uses logic and is not so complex and will help. Here's another plan. Here we go. All that said and done. Let me show you a backup plan. The moves, the flips, all that's pretty good. But in some situations, this situation, we see that it can really be pretty confusing. So my suggestion to you on the next exam we take next Thursday, our first exam, is to also use a backup plan. Make a table. You know, XY table? Well, you know how to do that for a long time, right? I would do that as a backup plan because the move flip thing gets pretty complex right around here when there's a move and a flip in the same direction. But the order and all that's just too complex. Instead, I, I tried teaching people all that. First year I taught pre-calculus. I gave them every little rule, and they were so confused by that first exam, I thought, i got to do a new plan. Then I started making tables. People did a lot better. So let me show you what I mean by the table. Make the table, and here's how you make it. It would be so helpful, wouldn't it, if we could find the new center point. That's almost the whole story. You know what I mean? The original center point starts at the origin, we're wondering, is the final center point, does it end up right three or does it end up left three? We know it's, we know it's a, a V-shape and everything. We just need to find that new center point. That's really most of the battle, isn't it? I can give you a way to find that new center point that's foolproof, that you can't mess up, and it's super quick and easy. That is always, always plug in what makes the X zone zero? Can you read all that writing? That's kind of bad. Whatever, always plug in whatever will make X's little world, right? His square root, his absolute value, his whatever, his little world, just his little world, zero. What's his little world? This right here. What do I plug in for X? Plus three. Three. Positive, normal, three. Wouldn't you agree? It's always easy to identify. If I plug in three there, I'm going to make that little world zero, aren't I? That's where it is. That tells you where it's going to end up. Whatever number plugs in to make that zero will be... And what, and what are you going to get for y? Two times three minus three. Two. Two times zero. Oh, zero. Zero. So that means... What does that mean? That means over 3, up 0, there it is. 
that's the center. All other fancy moves and flip rules aside, that'll always work. That is reliable. So I would, on the next test we take, on the first test we take on Thursday, I would use that as a backup plan. Because you want to be sure you're getting them right, right? You don't want to be, like, unsure. So I would do the move flip thing. That'll help. That will help. The move flip thing to eliminate a couple of obvious wrong answers. But then to be sure, sure in the end, I would plug in just one point. It's quick. And then you'll know with confidence. Oh, yeah. The center's got to be 3-0. It's got to be this one. He's over 3. No way is it that one. Even though you think, yeah, but that's left 3. Whatever. I know this is the right point. It must have been that order, flip, rotate thing. Does that make sense? So that's a backup plan which you want to follow. Let me, let me show you. Let me make one up to see if this is making sense. What if somebody gives me 3 plus um, square root of 2 minus x, maybe with a 4 in the front there, there, and they want me to graph that thing. That looks pretty tough, right? Now, here, let me make it even harder. Let me, let me go... Come on. There, 3 minus 4, root of 2 minus x. Ugly. Watch how easy it is with a little table. So I'm going to make my little xy table. I'm going to plug in for x what will make what, whatever, whatever makes the x zone. This is the x zone, right? Whatever's in his little world, in the root, in the absolute value, in the whatever, become 0. zero. So what could I plug in for x that will make his world 0? Two. 2. And when you plug that in, not only will that work, find the y value, that will be the exact center dot, wherever that thing is. What is that going to be? y will equal 3 minus 4 root of zero. 2 minus 2. So 3 minus 4 root of 0, that's 3 minus 0, 3. y is 3. So that means right 2, up 3, boom, there's the new center dot. For sure. Completely reliable. You find that will tell you where the new center dot has moved to. Just plug in, no matter how complex they make it, just plug in what for x, whatever will make x's little zone 0, and then find y. Notice y didn't become 0 this time. Not all of y was 0. Just x's zone was 0. Everybody see the difference between those two statements? I'm saying plug in what make x's zone 0, his little root world or absolute value world or whatever. So 2, 3, there it is. And now, from there, can you tell me what is that negative on x? What, now, now let's use our flip move rules. We know, we know where it's moved to. That's the new center. It's a root graph. It's a firework. It's either going off that way, that way, that way, or that way. Which one? Well, what does a, what does a negative on x do? Sideways flip. So it's not going right. It's going left. And what does a negative here do? I hope that's not confusing you. Just think about that's a negative 4 multiplying the front. That's a vertical flip. Negative numbers multiplying the front are a vertical flip, so it's going down and left. There it is. Down and left. We good there? See how you can find a lot about the graph really quickly and easily? It's over 2, up 3, going down and left because this means left. And this means down. All right, I probably used up way too much time, but I hope that'll be helpful. We'll look at that when we look at the practice exam next Tuesday. And I'll show you how to look at the options and eliminate a couple of them with the down stuff and then find the center to it is. Number 35 is really, really hard. And it is on the YouTube separately. For 20 minutes yesterday, I talked to my other class about number 35, and I thought, I don't got time to do this in every class. So I stuck it on YouTube. So it's on, you, it's on the, it, you, know, you know how to go to YouTube, right? Um, you'll, you'll, you'll find it. It's on the M math 4B Tuesday, Thursday, and it just says problem number 35. It's all, it's 20 minutes. It's its own thing, problem number 35. So uh, I'll leave that to you to find.